Hey guys, it's Bethany with ABQ Creations here with another tutorial for you. You know those really chunky knit blankets that have been super popular lately but would cost about $600 if you wanted to buy one off Etsy? Well, I'm going to show you how to make a giant crocheted blanket using only your hands and a pair of scissors. I've been obsessed with those giant knit blankets ever since I saw them come out several years back. The problem is, they're so expensive, I wanted to find a cheaper alternative. For today's tutorial, I'm using Bernat Big Blanket Yarn in various complementing blue and gray tones. This yarn is fantastic for this project as opposed to roving wool, it doesn't shred apart as you use it. It's super soft and it should hold up to some washings. With the Bernat Big Blanket Yarn, you can find the skeins at Michael's. They run about $10 a skein full price, but there are various coupons usually throughout the year, so you can get them pretty cheap if you need to go on a budget. I used 10 skeins of yarn total to make this size blanket you see here laid out on a queen size bed. All you need for this project are a pair of scissors and your hands. Let's get started. To get started with our giant crochet blanket, we first need to make a slip knot. So to do that, we're going to cross over our end over our working yarn, and then we're going to pull our working yarn through the loop that we just made. You want to make sure that you keep your tension very, very loose for your chains, and you also want to make sure you have a long enough tail that you can weave in when you're done. So to start our chains, you're going to put your fingers through your loop and you're going to pull this yarn and you're going to get it through the loop. We want to keep it pretty loose, so make sure you have enough room in your foundation chain so that you'll be able to work back in them on the future rows. So again, we're going to grab our working yarn pull it through our loop and give it some slack. Try to keep it consistent down your whole chain. So we now have two, three, four, five, we're going to keep going until we get to 20 chains. Once you have as many starting chains as you'd like, I went up to 25. I'm going to chain one more and turn my work. So I'm starting with 26 chains. And again, we're going to work from the right to the left. Once you want to begin working back through your chain, we're going to look for the back loop. So you'll notice this we want to be our bottom of our blanket. It has the nice V stitches and we want to leave that to the bottom of the blanket. It'll look nice and neat. What we want to work into are these back loops. So you're going to try to not twist your chain as you work across. But this is what we're going to do. We want to keep our tension about like this now on our way back. We're going to find that second chain from our hook, which is right here. So we're going to reach in to the second chain while keeping this loop on our hand. We're going to pick up our working yarn, pull it through that first back loop, loosen up the tension about like this, grab the yarn, pull it through both loops. Again, keeping the tension about like this we need to find our next loop. We just worked into this one, so now we're going to go into this next back loop. We're going to reach in, pull up our yarn, loosen up the tension just slightly, grab our working yarn, pull it through both our loops. Okay, so we're going to keep this going we're going to go into our next back loop, pull our working yarn through that first loop, 
place it on our hand, and then we're going to go through both loops. We're going to continue this all the way across, going in through the next back loop, drawing up our yarn. I'm grabbing another one. So continue this until you get all the way across. And if you started with 26 chains, you should have 25 stitches by the end of this row. Once you come to the end of your row, you might need to search for your last loop just a little bit. So, and it might be a little bit tight depending on how your tension was the, on your first chain foundation. Okay, so we're going to pull up that second, that final loop, and then we're going to go through both loops. Now we've finished one of our, our first row. So now you should have something that looks kind of similar where if you're looking straight down on it, you can see all the, the V stitches that you've created, these loops. We're going to work back through them. So we're going to chain one. So we take our working yarn, we chain one at the very end. And then we're going to turn our work. So we want to always be working, if you're right-handed, you're always going to be working from right to left. And if you want to count your stitches and make sure that you have enough, you're going to count these loops. So you're going to go back through. This is our chain, so we don't count that. But this is our first stitch of the row, so we would say one, and again, you're looking in these V's. You're going to work into these loops. There's two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay. So to work back through, it's going to be very similar to what we did on the last round, except we're working into those loops. So you're going to have your hand in your working yarn in your loop. You're going to pull up a loop of yarn through that first stitch and again you have two strands on your hand grab your working yarn and pull it through both loops and that's your first stitch for this row so again we're going to find the next loop we're going to insert our fingers to pull up a loop And we have two on our hand. We're going to pull the yarn through both of those loops. And we have our second stitch. So we're going to continue this across, finding each loop, pulling up yarn, and pulling your yarn through both. So continue working across, keeping the same tension as what you used on the last round so that your blanket is consistent. Continue working across and I'll meet you at the end. Once you come to the end of your second row, you might notice it gets a little tricky to find this last stitch. Just look at the top and you'll notice your V coming out, so we're going to work into those two loops. So we're going to enter into this stitch, we're going to pull up our loop, and then pull it through both. So at the end of every row, this is how we want to end it. We want to chain one, turn your work, and begin your new row. So this, all your future rows will be worked the same as the previous row. So here's our chain one, and we want to work into our first stitch. So go ahead and insert your fingers, pull up a loop, grab your yarn and pull it through both. 
and then just simply continue this pattern as long as you want to make the blanket. I'll come back on to show how I do a color change, but I'm going to keep working on my blanket off camera and then I'll show you how we tie it off at the very end. If you need to walk away and take a break, the nice thing with crochet is you don't have to worry about dropping all your stitches like you do with knitting. You simply just want to give yourself some slack and you can set down your work and walk away. When you're ready to pick it back up, you tighten down your loop. And you're ready to go again. Continue working and I'll meet back with you at my next color change. I'm back with my last stitch before my color change. So you want to start working into your final stitch of your row and pull up your loop as you normally would. Now instead of taking your same color and pulling through that loop, we're going to switch to our new color right here. And you want to leave, again, a long enough tail that you can weave at, in at the end. But you're going to pull up a loop and this is now your working yarn. So we're going to go ahead and chain one and then we're going to tie off our knot. And we're going to tighten this down a little bit. There, so it's nice and tight. So this is now our working yarn. And to tie it off, you're going to take your end of your new color and you're going to tie it to the end of your last color. And you're just going to do a simple knot. Okay, from here we cut off the excess yarn, again leaving a long enough tail for your blue. And we're going to just save that for the end. We already chained one, so now all we have to do is turn our work. And continue working as before. Sorry, the blanket gets a little bulky to work under the camera. So we have our first stitch, and we're going to just work into that same as before, drawing up our loop. And again, continuing with our pattern. So once you come to the end of your blanket and you want to tie it off, you'll have to go back and weave in your ends. You're going to weave the gray up towards the gray block and the blue you'll weave in down below. So keep working on your blanket and I'll check back with you at the end. Now I am coming up on my last few stitches. Okay, so once I work into my final stitch, I'm going to pull up my loop, and then I'm going to do one more slip stitch, and this time I'm just going to cut off my loop. So I'm cutting off my working yarn and again leaving it long enough to weave it in. and then you pull it all the way through and tighten it down really well. So now we're just gonna go through all our colors and you're just gonna take your yarn and you wanna weave it in. Since we obviously don't have a large enough yarn needle to do this, we're just gonna work with our hands just like we did using our hands as a hook. We'll use them as a needle and we'll just kinda weave it back and forth. So go ahead and do this for all of your loose ends and then your blanket is complete. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me down below. 
And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on my current projects. You can also find my written patterns at www.abqcreations.com. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.